There are two types of potential claims that Rosa has. Firstly, I will discuss Tate Modern's potential liability concerning Rosa's illness. To do this, I will first explore the causative issues in terms of Rosa's initial exposure to atrium by looking at the operation of legal and factual causation. I will also look at the potential defense of contributory negligence as well as the formalities pertaining to the intervening acts which may break the causative link. The second claim pertains to the role of Dr. Khan's wrongful diagnosis and his potential liability. I will explore whether there has been a breach of duty of care and to what degree is Dr. Khan responsible for the harm Rosa is suffering regarding her diminished survival rate. There are three elements Rosa must satisfy to prove Tate Mother's liability. First, there must be a duty of care. Given that there is an employer-employee relationship, this is already established in line with Fairchild and Glenhaven Funeral Services. Therefore, Tate Modern is responsible for working conditions, particularly exposures that Rosa is, expo Rosa is subjected to. Is there a breach in this duty? Yes, due to Rosa's exposure to the atrium alone. Lastly, causation. This is the source of contention, as Rosa must establish a causative link. Rosa must prove both legal and factual causation to succeed in her claim. For factual causation, it must be established that but for the exposure to atrium Rosa suffered whilst working for Tate Modern, she would have suffered no harm. This test is established through Barnett and Chelsea. However, this is not the case here for two reasons. One, given that Rosa was exposed to atrium from multiple sources, and two, it can't be established on scientific evidence if atrium is a divisible or an indivisible harm. Yet, we can go further in establishing liability beyond the but for test. There are two types of arguments to be made. The first where Rosa's harm was a result of accumulative exposure to atrium. The courts could still impose liability. The understanding from Burlington Customs Limited and Wardlaw puts the burden of proof on Rosa to show that the exposure suffered at Tate Modern materially contributed to her harm. On the balance of probabilities, Rosa experienced a more consistent and prolonged exposure at Tate Modern than any other source, meaning they materially contributed to the harm and are therefore liable in accordance to Bonington. However, between the periods of 2010 and 2012, Rosa was exposed to atrium whilst volunteering at several churches. Ordinarily, this results in liability being apportioned severally. This requires the churches to be held responsible for the exposure she's experienced there. If the harm was said to be indivisible, caused by a single exposure, the issue becomes a bit more complex. This would mean that there are multiple causative agents requiring a single exposure to cause an indivisible injury. The case of McGee and National Co Board develops the law in Burlington for this purpose, as it establishes that to impose liability, a breach of duty must materially a breach of duty must materially increase the risk of the harm she suffered. For this purpose, the five years of exposure Rosa, ex Rosa experienced at Tate Modern is sufficient to constitute a material increase in risk. However, if HM is said to be an indivisible harm, this produces several and joint liability on the part of Tate Modern and the churches Rosa volunteered at. Therefore, both defendants would be liable for the whole of the harm. This allows the claimants to go after any of the defendants for payments of the compensation. Yet, it would be of far more benefit to Rosa to go after Tate Modern rather than the churches. The courts are likely to apply policy considerations to protect the church in that the courts may view the church as a charitable group and simply there would be a less of a chance that they can afford the compensation rather than with Tate Modern. Regarding legal causation, Rosa must demonstrate that the injury was not too remote a consequence from the defendant's negligence. This is a matter of establishing the foreseeability of harm. In Hughes and Lord Advocate, the House of Lords states that, the, states that only the type of harms and not the extent of the harm needs to be foreseeable. This is a question of interpretation for the courts. Knowledge in the medical community of the effect of atrium may negate the fact that they did not foresee Rosa's resulting disease. Therefore, it would be likely it would likely satisfy the foreseeability element. Yet, Tate Modern may put forward some defenses, the most significant one being the contributory, contributory negligence defense. Rosa's use of atrium on her own personal projects may have contributed to the harm she suffered. If the courts determine exposure to atrium to be an indivisible harm, 
Rosa's self-exposure would not defeat the principle of material contribution to risk that imposes liability on Tate Modern. The courts would likely apply the consideration as in Reeves and Commissioner of Police by prioritizing the duty of care that was broken in the first place on consideration of the balance of the balance of probabilities and in accordance to section 11 of the Contributory Negligence Act, they may reduce compensation by the extent to which Rosa materially increased the risk of harm by considering the length of intensity of her self-exposure. However, if the exposure to atrium is said to have cumulatively caused the harm, the courts will likely apply similar reasoning as in Fitzgerald and Lane. First, liability would be imposed to the extent to which all the parties contributed to the whole harm, reducing the compensation to the degree in which Rosa contributed to her own harm. It is important to note now, if liability can be, cannot be imposed on Dr. Khan for the further harm done to Rosa, according to Robinson and the post office, the chain of, com of causation will not be broken, meaning Tate Modern is liable for the harm done to, done to the extent by which Dr. Khan made the harm worse. I will now talk about Rosa's claim against Dr. Khan. In establishing causation, it is asked if the negligent, negligent act significantly altered the chances of the claimant's survival. In the case of Greg and Scott, the law lords made it a requirement for the claimant to show that the negligence of the doctor made it more than 50% likely that 50% more likely that the patient could not be cured. Had the diagnosis been done correctly, Rosa would have would have had a 45 to 55 percent chance of survival. The uncertainty of her chance of survival confuses the conclusion as to causation. Rosa must establish that both for the negligence she she would possess the required chance of survival. However, given that her chance of survival might be below 50 percent, as well as the likely fear of a floodgate of cases in which pay, in which patients may successfully prove causation despite an inconclusive chance of survival, the chance of successfully establishing causation are quite low. To establish a breach of duty now, in cases of medical negligence, there is a particular emphasis on reasonableness pertaining to the actions of a reasonable professional. Justice McNair, in the Bollum case, establishes the requirements that if a doctor is acting in accordance with a practice accepted by a responsible body of medical men who possess similar skill, his actions cannot be held as being negligent. Whilst we must ask whether Dr. Khan's diagnosis of asthma constitutes a standard of practice accepted by a responsible body of doctors, Lord Denning in White House and Jordan, however, suggests that some errors, though accepted, are too glaring to constitute, an, to con to constitute negligence, to not constitute negligence. For these reasons, the considerations in, Boli in Bolifo and City and Hackney are vital. It is not enough that a medical body might agree that Dr. Khan's that Dr. Khan's actions are okay. The court also asked to ask if Dr. Khan's opinions withstand logical analysis. Therefore, the fact that Rosa is dealing with a rare cancer of which there is limited knowledge as to its developments may expand the definition of reasonableness for this purpose. Furthermore, the reason and the difficulty breathing experienced by Rosa may appear to be seemingly ordinary symptoms. Therefore, Dr. Khan's diagnosis might seem to be reasonable and logical in the court's view. It is therefore unlikely that the court would, would conclude that Dr. Khan's actions has breached the, a duty of care. Rosa is likely to be successful in a claim against Tate Modern, both from a legal and a factual causation perspective, despite her volunteering with the churches confounding the claim. Furthermore, Tate Modern are likely to be liable to the extent to which Dr. Khan made Rosa's claim, Rosa's harm, worse. Yet, Dr. Khan himself may not be as be held liable for the reduction in Rosa's chances of survival, significantly due to the rarity of the type of cancer Rosa was dealing with in the first place. In imposing liability on Tate Modern and absorbing Dr. Khan of further liability, Rosa's, ex Rosa exem Rosa's claim exemplifies why and how policy's decisions are entrenched in the operation of law in the field of negligence, specifically because policy works to assist the law of thought in achieving its aims, despite absence or uncertainty of key facts.